Guys, welcome to a very special episode because I'm in Michigan at, and I'm standing next to a truck that many of you have been asking for and asking about and asking many questions. This is the new 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R. That R is very important. And I have the chief engineer, Carl, here. Carl. Good to see you again, Good sir. to see you, man. We usually see each other around this truck. Yes. And maybe some other performance machines. Yeah, sometimes it's a Mustang, sometimes a Bronco Raptor. Well, dude, so in this video, I want to kind of figure out, you know, what makes this tick? Because you also have some amazing displays here. You yep. have the engine. So people have been asking for a V8 to uh, put back in the Raptor truck for many, many years. Right, and so that's a big part of why the V8s come back, right? So um, we spent a lot of time with customers. Uh, we were just out this weekend with uh, the Raptor junkies. Uh, so we always get that feedback and we really wanted to bring the V8 back, but what was really important is the suspension that we put in in the Gen 3 to make that possible. So the big five link is the reason we get the full torque out of the 3.5 now. We don't truncate it like we used to in the Gen 2 uh, because it decouples that hot mode of the axle uh, from the lateral compliance. And so we're able to keep that traction. So now I can you know, spend another 83 pounds and put 250 more horsepower in. Okay. So Pretty good trade-off. That's the weight difference, right? Yeah. So, so where do we start? I guess let's start with the engine. Yep. And let's go to the chassis and then look at the truck as well. Yep. So th this is the puppy we're talking about. Yes. So it's got um, a little bit of lineage back to the old Voodoo. I think the intake uh, valve is still the same and then uh, everything is different. So that's the old 350. So as we go through the 5.2, it is a purpose-built motor for poor performance. Uh, so what's new for it in the Raptor application is we had to meet truck durability. So, you, so different uh, sumped oil pan, you'll notice it's really set up to take really big angles. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't take... Uh, Down below, you mean? Yep, you're, so you're, that's yeah. all unique um, to the uh, Raptor R, and that is set up so if you're on a huge angle, uh, climbing a dune, uh, having fun out there, uh, we will always have the sump uh, picking up oil. Uh, also different, again, uh, you'll see cast stainless steel manifold, exhaust manifolds. Yeah. Right uh, we don't run tubulars uh, like we do on the GT500. Uh, this is a truck designed heavy duty for durability uh, cast stainless system. Uh, we went to a smaller pulley on the supercharger that just spins it faster um, so we can get more power out of it. Uh, in that application, again, you'll change it again for um, for flow. All the cooling system is different again in the Raptor. The exhaust system, uh, the Raptor is quite a bit longer than a uh, Mustang. Yeah, and you can <laughs> see it right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's why uh, some of the reasons the horsepower is different uh, is we just have a lot more air pushing out the exhaust system. Yeah. But we did all the unique tuning for the exhaust and the induction to get, you know, 700 horsepower out of it for that uh, investment in 83 pounds. Heavily aluminum intensive uh, motor. So this is what you meant when you said a small weight gain, right? Yeah. You, you mentioned 80, 82 pounds. Yep. So basically because uh, three and a half liter V6 yep. is no more, but this is, I mean, still there, but in the R is the V8. Yep. So 5.2 liters. And this adds a little bit of weight too. Yes, it's a, it's a crazy uh, heavy thing. That's about 100 pounds and it's, uh, it's about 150 pounds of uh, parasitics. Yes, but so the horsepower rating that you're communicating is 700 horsepower. Yep. 640 pound feet of torque. But here's a question that came in from some of our viewers. Um, obviously, this truck will exist in the competitive landscape. There are some other vehicles with higher horsepower numbers, maybe higher torque numbers, um, especially with electric vehicles coming on. Um, so why, why, why 700 horsepower and not maybe more? You know, I think it, it, it's a point where you're trying to balance how much power can you put down on the wheels and how much weight you want to put on the front end of the vehicle. Uh, you know, Raptors are built to fly, uh, heavy front ends don't land well. 
Uh, they go like this, I guess, Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. So for us, uh, we wanted a really durable motor, uh, and we wanted to make sure we weren't adding tons of weight on the front end, uh, so we still could put the power down and then uh, have a good performing vehicle in the off-road space. A lot of what we're after here is really pushing the Raptor to its full capability. Uh, now that we have the new rear suspension, we can put that power down, um, use the all-wheel drive system to help us out with the front end to get all that power down because it's, uh, it's a tremendous amount of power with that 700 and 640. Yeah, yeah. Once you multiply it through a 10-speed transmission, you know, in a 410 axle. In 410s? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I haven't driven the truck yet. That yeah. comes a little later. Uh, I'm very excited. So you're basically saying that this is kind of like a balance package, if yes. is, so to speak, right? Yes. It is still uh, over the top when you drive it uh, okay, off-road. I, I can't wait. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, we took it out to Glamis. Uh, it's just a, you know, a hoot to drive in, in, in the desert out there. So let's focus on the on the chassis right so most of it i mean is this kind of most gen, of it's gen the three? same it's it's gen 3 so the big thing for us on the gen 3 is getting rid of leaf springs right so the leaf springs replaced with the uh you know almost a meter long arm right um really gives you a lot of stability the axle can take that without pitching you won't get skate, right? The axle's under control laterally by those arms. So it's the best of all worlds when we're trying to put a tremendous amount of power down and then do it in the off-road space. Again, where we, we tune our trucks, it's that aggressive, whoops, aggressive, uh, really hard terrain, running washes, where you're really you know, taking that full travel of 14 inches in the rear and really dissipating that in the shock not in you, right? Really decoupling you from that experience of how rough that road is and not jarring. Um, so obviously when you put a V8 of 700 horsepower, you go faster through the wash uh, yeah. than you ever were. And so when we put it into this vehicle, it's 37 inch standard, right? It gives us a 33 degree approach angle, which when you're running this truck, um, you know, you got so much acceleration capability, you're really charging all events as far as you can see in the off-road mm -hmm. space, that's really your limiter. And so you really wanted that extra running clearance and uh, approach angle with so that. So that's why you chose the 37? Yep. Because you can get a package 37 on, a, I guess, a V6 Power yep. Raptor as well, or a 35. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so this is standard with the 37. Again, we're the only ones in the industry that have that from the factory. And so when you couple that uh, approach capability, this, this chassis uh, that we've got, you really end up with, you know, very close to a trophy truck right out of the factory. And, uh, you know, we've talked to people in the San Diego area who've got theirs from their dealers yeah. uh, on the list and super excited and they'll run them basically as a chase trucks for their trophy truck. Um, well, here's something unique, right? So Raptor R tuning, because you're saying, you know, there's a little bit more weight up front, yep. right? So we do bump the spring rate by about 5% okay. to compensate for that. Um, other stuff, we um, basically put the intercooler for the supercharger in the same place that we put the charge air cooler for the 3.5. Okay. So it worked out for us, we just flip one for the other one. So it's a low so temp radiator. So it's somewhere radiator. in here? It's or? this low temp radiator. Oh. We still use our fans that we use on okay. the... On the uh, on the V6 turbocharger, okay. this would be a charger cooler on this. It's actually the low temp radiator on this application, and we'll run a unique pump circuit to that. And that's basically it goes into the turbocharger, right? That's your uh, that's your cooling for yeah. the uh, the compressed air, right, on a supercharger. Uh, we had to beef up the axle, um, just more torque through the system, so we beefed up the axle. So this part right here, yep. right? Yep, and then. The beefed up parts, the case, you'll notice the case has now got an aluminum um, front housing on it now, cover uh, that is unique to the R, uh, but we took the rest of the improvements, just like what we do when we do upgrade our engines, we'll put that back. So we put those back into the 3.5 Raptor on the rest of the case changes, but the aluminum cover to really get the most heat dissipation that we can get out of it since it's running harder. Uh, the transmission had to be beefed up on the R, uh, so we beefed up the clutch systems, took some clutch systems off the, uh, off the Super Duty 10-speed. Uh, uh, it's still, still a 10-speed, obviously. Yeah. yeah. 
And then you can see that drive shaft's just slightly bigger in diameter to throw the, uh, throw the torque back to the rear end. Yeah, and of course, uh, the T-case yep. um, is T still capable of yep. all-wheel drive and four Yep, four it's still a though. full locking uh, chain-driven uh, system. Um, and in the front, sorry, before we move on. So in the front, there's still a torsen. Uh, no, we took the torsen out. Oh, it's not, okay. Yep. We took the torsen out. How, we didn't, really, didn't need it anymore. Okay. Um, we really have a lot more capability than Gen 2 and in the Gen 1 when we put the torsen in. We can basically control with brakes and we don't need that um, that mechanical system to lock the two. Okay. So uh, the T-case is there. Yep. Uh, and then you said, yeah, this looks pretty massive. Didn't yes. <laughs> this is massive. Yeah. I mean, large. Yes. Barely fits. Yes. Yeah. You could see the, you could see the clearance between the, the muffler um, and the rest. And I can see it. So triple outlet still from the muffler. Yeah. We use uh, the same, same architecture as what we use both on the Bronco Raptor and uh, three liter turbo and the three five turbo that we use on uh, this vehicle. What we had to do in this one to get legal, we had to put bottle resonators in front of it, uh -huh. see, and we put bottle resonators in the rear. Okay, so these guys. It's just too, so much more noise. Uh, but good, so good noise. Good noise, but we have to be legal. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and then I we mean, had, you could straight pipe it, but yeah. that would not be, yeah. that would not be legal. So uh, it's unique tuning in the muffler systems, and then we run perf tips to take out any of the high frequency noise, because again, you know, sound is super important to uh, for performance customers. Yeah. Uh, so when we did it, uh, when you drive it, it is um, it is a lot louder than our uh, our other vehicles, shall we say? Yeah, and I think people have been asking for that as yes. well, and not just the performance, but also kind of the auditory. Uh, part of it. I, I, I want to draw attention to a couple of things. Well, first of all, shocks. Yep. So you mentioned a little bit already. So uh, these are 3.1s, correct? Yep. So live valves. Yep. Okay. Um, so these are live valves. Uh, same system we've used on the entire Gen 3. So okay. uh, the big thing for that when we came into Gen 3, it really doubles our range of authority. Uh, so electronically, uh, we'll know where you are from the right height sensors and from the yaw of the vehicle. And so either you choose where you want to be. Yeah, there are yep. right, right, yep. sensor, right height sensors right here. So we have right height sensors in all four corners. Yeah. And then, of course, we, we take the accelerations and pedals. We write our own algorithms. And we can basically set up, you know, if you're in the air, we'll know you're in the air. We can soften the vehicle up so it comes down soft and absorb that energy. Uh, and then we know side to side what you're doing to really dampen out that wheel end and really keep traction, right, in this application uh, when you're out there. That is really what um, the V8 pushes that chassis to, to be fully capable in that off-road space because you can put power down so much quicker uh, than we have on the V6. So it really, really pushes this system, which is pretty massive. It, it is very trophy truck like. I mean, you, you've seen them, right? They're yeah. huge trailing arms like this. Yeah. And that really, you'll see it when you're out there tomorrow, of its ability to run through ruts in deep sand uh, and those types of conditions and still keep those rear tires uh, in traction in that situation. So you can run fast in the desert, which is what these things are built for. And then as a reminder, the blue stuff is all unique to Raptor. So these are all the unique stuff in Raptor. Versus the regular F-150. Right? Versus the regular yeah. F-150, yeah. what we did with, uh, with the Gen 3 and the orange parts, all unique Raptor chassis parts. Yeah. So uh, before we cl close out um, this video, I, I know there's other tech from Fox that's out there, including the X2. Um, the dual valves, compression and rebound adjustment. Um, can you give any indication? I mean, is that still coming? I mean, or are you pretty happy with the current? So this is John's uh, control system. Okay. Um, so as always for technology, we're always looking out there uh, to see what's out, right? So, but for us, for what we're controlling right now, we have uh, a lot of capability in John's control. And that's really, as the wheel comes up, what you want to control, right? Okay. That's the big part of off-roading is controlling that wheel as it comes up. 
Well, these uh, trucks are not very lightweight, although they do have <laughs> aluminum bodies, these yeah. trucks. But still, I mean, there's a lot of weight you're moving. A lot of weight, a lot of weight you're moving and controlling, and even from the wheel end, right, these, these wheels and tires are not super light. Speaking of controlling, I, I just wanted to um, point out this Panhard bar. Yeah. That's it's actually designed to fit around the 37. Yes. <laughs> there's not a lot of clearances there. No, and the hitch is designed too, so we run a unique hitch. Uh, you can pretty much see it's bowed out, so we bow it out here. Uh -huh to get around the 37. Um, and then to keep the tire in place, we go through the extra means as it goes through the factory and the, the Dearborn truck to make sure they can get it up there just right and hold it in place because it's also tight to the exhaust systems. So it is quite a trick to get that coming from the factory, but um, strong demand for that, right? Let's finish up by opening the door yep. on this truck because I want to show the interior. And point out that this is the Raptor is kind of like, like one package, right? I mean, it's the, not like you can get different luxury features. No, it's or, pretty much the moonroof is the option. Uh huh. And then if you don't want the stickers, you can always take the stickers off. Let me let me turn off the the light just for a second. I mean, so I mean, when you're buying the Raptor R, really you're kind of checking that box. Yes. You're getting the V8, everything else we spoke about and then kind of the luxurious interior. Right, so the interior um, is black Recaro, so it's, it's our Highline interior, and then it has unique carbon fiber weave uh, for the dash panel. Uh, on the exterior, again, um, it's a black treatment on all the fender flares, fender flares yeah. front and rear. Um, and of course, you, you had a v, V8 right there. Oh, look at that. I found it. I found it. Yeah. <laughs> the design team has a lot of fun with that. Well, Great there you team. have it. So um, I hope hopefully a lot of your questions were answered. Carl, thank you for spending thank the time. Thank you very much. I'm always thankful because I love all these details and I think the audience agrees. Um, so we'll see you with another video coming up soon where we can talk about technology inside, yep. driving, etc., etc. So Carl, thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. And by the way, orders are open, but they're probably sold out. <laughs> That's a question for somebody else, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, I've talked to Brian. All right. Sounds See good. Ya. Thanks, guys. And oldtfl.com all the time. Thanks.